This topic is FIFO and it's pronounced as FIFO stands for first in and first out. FIFO is a memory structure used in chip design for various purposes that we'll go through in details. What is a fi FIFO or FIFO consists? FIFO consists of a queue or an array of storage elements where data is written to or read from. It's like a queue where a first person entering the queue is the first person to come out. So FIFO is using the chip designs and take care of certain requirements which we'll go through in this video and let's see what are the requirements that FIFO covers. So the first use of a FIFO in chip design is that it acts as a temporary storage element where there's a mismatch in data rate coming in and going out. So what's a mismatch in data rate? For example, a CPU can write a data into the FIFO and continue with other activities and the device can read the data from a FIFO as its own convenience. So let us take an example as an Ethernet controller where it dumps the data it received from the network to a FIFO. Okay, it dumps the data, whatever it receives from the network into the FIFO and the backend DMA controller that's direct memory access or the peripheral component interconnect express reads the data from FIFO and sends it to a system memory. So a FIFO is used to reduce the mismatch and so that there should be no mismatch in the data rate and the data will be protected and no data is lost. It's not protection is not giving, it is uh, protecting the loss of data, okay? And the next use of it is synchronization between two different clock domains. In real world, data has come from one clock domain to a different clock domain where FIFO is used not only as temporary storage element, but also as a synchronizing agent. So apart from synchronization and mismatch in data rate, at coverage, uh, FIFO can also be used as a data with mismatch between the incoming paths and outgoing data paths. So what happens if a device A which has an output of 32 bit width and, and device B which is getting the input from device A, that means device A is connected to device B, but device B is 16 bit input width. 32 to 16 who's going to convert FIFO is going to convert so FIFO is mainly used in clock domain crossing data rate mismatch and synchronization and data with mismatch so I'm going to cover about the uh, FIFO operation in this video and later we're going to go in the synchronous FIFO and asynchronous FIFO so please be patient and I'm going to discuss about the FIFO operation so this is how a FIFO looks. So it has a depth and width. So here I have considered an example of 0 to 8 as a depth and the width is 0 to 6. So 6 bits of width and 8 bits of depth. So these are the interface signals for an FIFO. This is an asynchronous FIFO because it's working on two different clocks, write clock and read clock. Okay. So these are the interface signals for a FIFO normally, read enable, read clock, read RST, read data and read pointer and write, write enable, write data, write pointer, write clock and write RST. So I'm going to say a, a how a write is done, how going to read is done. So first, whenever a write is done, write enable should be high. So write enable will go high, then after write data will be written into the location where right pointer is pointing. So if a right pointer is pointing to 010, our data will be written by right data in 010. So similarly, the read operation is gonna be done. Whenever read enable is high, and read data is taking the data from the location where the read pointer is pointing. If read pointer is pointing to 01011, then the data will be read from 011. So this is a basic operation of a write and read from a FIFO. So I'm going to uh, say about the full condition, empty conditions. 
So in the beginning, a 5 hole is empty. The 5 hole is empty. Both write pointer and read pointer, these pointers will be pointed to zero. These are just for the reference, not they are pointing to 010 one zero or 101. One. This for the reference, but in the beginning, when 5 hole consists nothing, they will be pointed to 000. zero, zero. Okay? So in the same locations, that means it's an empty FIFO. So we can consider that whenever the write pointer and the read pointer are equal, then it's an empty condition. Okay, so this is an empty conditions. So whenever we start writing, what happens if first it will be zero, then write enable is high, then after we'll start writing the data, the write pointer will increment up to zzz, it goes till seven. So when the write pointer is over here and the read pointer is over here, then it's a full condition. After, see, after the write pointer reaches over here, then after you increment the write pointer to write the data again, then it will go back to zero and it will erase the data of zero, zero, zero if any data is written here. So you need to be careful. The conditions for overrun and underrun. What's mean by overrun? Overrun is means by that writing to a full FIFO means a FIFO is full but you want to write it completely back again so never write overrun never write overrun never write when the FIFO is full this is an important point most of the mistakes happen here never write to an overrun FIFO when the FIFO is full you should not write and another is underrun never read from an empty FIFO never read from empty FIFO what will you get from an empty FIFO so never read from an empty FIFO. So, so for better understanding of a FIFO, I'm gonna deal with the timing diagram, how the clocks and signals will be there. So this is a basic timing diagram for uh, uh, FIFO. As you can see, this is a clock. Uh, both I consider that write and read are happening with a similar clock. So this is a synchronous, synchronous FIFO. I'll deal with the synchronous FIFO and asynchronous FIFO later. And so I'm giving you a basic example how a timing diagram of a FIFO looks. So when write enable is high, so write enable is high. So at the time, the write point will be incremented to the different location from 000 to 001. So when this happens, what happens is that, what happens is that write data will be written into 001. And after we have another write enable high over here, so write pointer will be incremented to 010 and write data will be written into 010. And again, write enable is high, we'll go into three location, third location, and the data will be written here. So this is the write operation signals. After the write operation has been done, if you want to read the data, we'll give write read enable high. So read enable is high for three clock signals at this posage, this posage, and this posage. So and read pointer will be incremented at the Simon Tellius polish whenever the read enable is high. So, and we'll read the data from that exact point from this location of read pointer. 010 we are reading D0, 010 we are reading D1, and 011 we are reading D2. So this is the basic operations how a FIFO looks. So there are, the FIFO is of two different types, synchronous and asynchronous. And I'm going to deal with that design part later. Uh, if you have any doubts regarding the FIFO, you can just comment below and please subscribe. That would be uh, helpful for me. Thanks for watching. We'll meet in the next video.